Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. So I've been recording some stuff that I just haven't finished. So I'm standing in my own garage today and I have some work to do here. I have some wires. I took down some old lights um, some time back and I got some wires flapping in the breeze. And so the National Electrical doesn't allow for wires flapping in the breeze. So today we're gonna put in a junction box and I'm gonna show you how to do that in this video. And I hope you enjoy this video. This is my dog Gons and today's Love Your Pet Day. So thanks for watching and enjoy the video. Okay, so the first order of business here is to make sure that this circuit is not live. So I'm gonna use that little tick tracer that I have and that basically just picks up a magnetic field around the wire to let you know whether it's live or not. This particular circuit here is a part of the garage circuit and I have two different switch legs and this is the opposite switch leg of the lights that are on right now. So that circuit is off. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut out this old splice, straighten out these conductors and get rid of that old connector and prepare it for the four inch square junction box that'll go there. The NAC requirement for junction boxes can be found in article 300, TAC 15. Boxes, conduit bodies or fittings where required. If you need to pause and read this article, I suggest that you do so. Next, I'm going to put on my tool pouch and get the necessary materials and tools that I'll need for this job. This is a rather simple job, I'm going to, but I'm going to need to find a ground screw and I'm going to have to get a four inch square box and a blank plate and a couple of screws and what I use is the M12 Surge uh, impact driver to drive the screws into the underside of the truss. And this will make up what's referred to as a surface mounted junction box. By installing this grounding screw into the box, what we're essentially doing is we're going to terminate one of the equipment grounding conductors to the box, therefore grounding the metal box. So after the box is prepared with the grounding screw, I'm going to knock out one of the knockouts at the bottom of the box and I'm going to attach it to the ceiling using two inch coarse screws. I actually like to use galvanized exterior screws. Uh, I keep the two inch variety uh, on board and I find that they're very simple for something going through sheetrock like this. Probably a little overkill, but uh, that's okay. So notice I haven't put the connector in yet. I'm going to use these white button connectors made by Arlington. And basically what that does, that allows me to put the conductors into the box before the connector. And then once the wires are pulled through the box, I put the connector on going up right there. So. So one of the things I noticed while I was working here is that I have two different size wires in this box. I have a number 12 and I have a number 14. Both of them are Romex wires, non-metallic sheath cable, uh, which is okay. Just as long as your circuit breaker or your overcurrent protective device is sized to the smaller conductor. So we never want to have a 14 gauge conductor under a 20 amp circuit breaker but it's okay to have a 12 gauge wire under a 15 amp circuit breaker. So you want the main purpose of the circuit breakers is not to protect the equipment, but to protect the conductors and that's how they're sized. So working with these two sets of wires here, going through this one um, connector, uh, getting them through could be a little tedious, uh, but eventually you get there if you just take your time. And once the connector's on and in place, um, then I'll strip back the sheeting and uh, get ready to make the splice. I prefer to strip back the sheathing on the non-metallic sheath cable um, after it's inside the box. So you got to have a minimum of a quarter inch of that sheathing in the, inside the box. That's the bare minimum. Uh, you could do more than that, but you shouldn't do less than that. And so the way you splice this here is the ground wire is always in the middle. So I like to take my utility knife, <clears throat> score the middle, and then uh, pull it back and then cut it off and... Now I'm ready to uh, remove the brown paper wrapping around the ground conductors. And uh, you'll see the first thing I do here after that is I attach the ground wire to the ground screw inside the box. And then we'll attach both the equipment ground grounding conductors together. 
and then we'll splice the two neutral wires together and then finally we'll splice the two ungrounded hot conductors together before finally putting on the blank plate over this four inch square deep box I like to I always um, keep the deep boxes on my truck and I have some here in my garage uh, simply uh, because you just have more room for conductors in this box so I'm probably gonna come out of this box again at some point and add a couple more lights in my garage and kind of I got a I have a couple of dark spots um, but it's not super dark and I just haven't done it yet so I may or may not come back uh, to this junction box but if I did I have enough room now to add more conductors uh, if I choose to so if you use a more shallow box which is a lot more common uh, you, you run out of alt alternatives uh, very quickly so that's the reason for the deep boxes and that's really all I ever keep on the truck Here is the National Electric Code requirement for covers on blank plates or outlet boxes. It can be found in Article 314, Tac 25 of the National Electric Code. <clears throat> 